Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I believe the member from Kasri is, is the Prime Minister. In presenting the motion, clearly articulated the intent and purposes of the Tourism Development Fund. Mr. Speaker, on February 20th, when we met in this Honorable House and we debated the new Tourism Development Bill, which has now been enacted, I presented to this Honorable House the necessity for us to have the Tourism Development Fund, and I went into some detail as to the role that it would play and the purposes for which it would have been created. So, Mr. Speaker, I will not take a very long time but before I proceed, Mr. Speaker, I, I really have to say something I did not contribute on the earlier debate. But just for the information of, of this Honorable House, once I listened to the member from Miku South speak about the IMF Article 4 consultation report, and he presented it as if the government had withheld the information, and it had taken so long for the report to be made public that the consultation took place in August, but it was only just released in March. And something just spiked my interest. You know, the curiosity that one can have sometimes. And I said, let me just find out in the past what happened under his watch. Because I was wondering, is it unusual for there to be such a long period before which reports are released? And I decided, let me just pick the 2020, 2019 report. You know, and I, and I did a little research online. When was the 2019 report released? February 24th, 2020. February 24th, 2020. So I then researched when did the consultation take place? February 7th, 2019. One year after. Why would the consultation have taken place on February the 7th, 2019, but the report only made public February 2020? And you cannot say COVID. You can't use COVID as an excuse. So why under you, it took more than a year for the report to be made public, but in this instance, you are presenting to St. Lucia and the world that something is untold. Something is unusual because it took a certain period of time for it to be released. So probably, Mr. Speaker, that he knows something that we don't know. Dishonesty, you call it. And you know, speaking on that subject, again, we have to come back, Mr. Speaker, to the conduct of the leader of the opposition. There he was writing all over the world all over St. Lucia is writing letters to the Attorney General that we are going to breach the Constitution. He wrote to the bar and said to the bar, can you work with me? Can you work with me because they have no respect for the Constitution. They are going to breach the Constitution. And he threatened to go to court and all and have injunction against Parliament because we are going to bridge the Constitution. And I started wondering, in which reality does he exist? Is this a case of Alice in Wonderland? Or Alan in Wonderland? What is this about? And then he decides, and somebody told me, he wrote to United Nations, OES, he writes to everybody, even write to former ambassadors in, or to ambassadors in St. Lucia. He wrote to ambassadors in St. Lucia that we are going to breach the constitution. Which constitution? We don't breach constitution on this side of, of the house. Yeah, he wrote the script. Which king? For, for someone who spent five years never appointing a deputy speaker, I think he has kind of post-traumatic stress, stress syndrome. Why would you believe that every action somebody would take would be as nefarious as yours? Why? And he comes there this morning and he witnesses democracy in action. The member from Viewfort South accepts to be the deputy speaker. Now, he can say he anticipated that. That's not true. So let's assume if you had anticipated that, why did you write all the letters? Why did you announce to the world? 
is it a mind that is so warped? Why? Tell me. So you could not have anticipated that. But even if you had anticipated it, it reveals the worst side of you as a politician, as a former leader of this country. The worst side. But I heard they were rejoicing, saying, Kenya Anthony will never accept it. Does anybody believe that the member from Beaufort South, the grandfather of the Labour Party right now, would act in a manner to undermine the St. Lucia Labour Party? They, they are taking joy, they say, when he stands up and he lectures us. He can lecture me any day. He has earned the right to do that. He's earned the right to do that. Just like Julian Han, so Julian Han can lecture me. Sir Calix George can lecture me. They have earned the right in our party. We respect our party leaders and the elders in our party. That's the difference between us and them. So Dr. Anthony, <laughs> Dr. Anthony is a man of integrity, a man of character. And he loves this Labour Party. Don't get involved in our business when he's lecturing us, if he ever stands up there. Let me tell you, many of us on this side has never had a better teacher than him. So, if he took joy believing that we'll be left, you know, we won't have a, a deputy speaker, he's going to go on. I heard they had injunction papers already prepared, ready to file. Ah. You're going to take your, your documents and, and, shred that. and shred it. <laughs> and shred it. Because you came here anticipating that there would be no deputy speaker and there would be chaos and you'd run to the courts and file an injunction. <laughs> yeah, according to the memo from Cassius, it's put the papers in your pipe and smoke it. So, Mr. Speaker, the Tourism Development Fund is based on a fundamental principle in the Tourism Development Bill, and that is of building resilience. The fund, by its very nature, will accumulate monies that can be used for the future development of the tourism industry. It will be used to ensure that the operations of the tourism department are met. It will be used as well, Mr. Speaker, to deal with issues that will arise, especially when we have challenges from natural disaster and other challenges in the industry. Look at what we just went through with COVID. We actually had no reserves to go to in this country to deal with some of the sectors that were affected. We believe in the resi building resilience in the industry. And by having a fund that has monies in it, when we do face a challenge, and God forbid we never have another COVID, but it may be some other challenge we face, we would have some resources available somewhere that the industry can use it for it to rebound. It will also assist us in maintaining infrastructure for the tourism industry. It will assist us in many other aspects in the operations of the tourism industry. So for us, it's a critical tool in achieving the, the, the principles and the, the dreams and the, the goals, the vision that we had when we passed the Tourism um, Development Bill. Uh, it will take some time for the resources to build, but we now have the basis upon which we can build. And we must, Mr. Speaker, in all that we see, still credit the, the last government for having gotten the tourism levy going and at least starting to create that dedicated um, line of stream of financing that we can use for marketing in this instance. And we're going to broaden that concept of having um, resources available to assist in the tourism industry. For us on this side, we want to transform the tourism industry. Some person said I should not continue spreading this narrative about more St. Lucians owning the tourism industry. But we believe it on this side of, of, of the house. We believe that more St. Lucians should be operating, more St. Lucians should be owning the tourism industry. And during the estimates next week and in the policy debate, I will be saying a lot more about what we are doing to ensure that the tourism industry, for us, it is an indigenization of the tourism industry, making sure indigenous initiative, indigenous effort can um, benefit from the, the tourism industry and in many ways you know is ensuring that the political economy of the tourism industry is such that as many solutions as possible can benefit from the industry and can prosper within the tourism industry so today mr speaker is a simple motion to start putting in place many of the elements of the tourism development bill to achieve 
that vision that we have of a more inclusive, a more resilient, and a more sustainable industry. And again, like I said, next week in the estimates, a lot more would be said on that. So I support the motion as presented by the member from Castries East. Thank you very much.